friends back home in New Zealand probably think I live in a tent and ride around on a gadagari because every time I talk to them, they ask me the weirdest questions about my life in Pakistan. So how's Pakistan? It's alright. I mean, it's Pakistan. Wait, I was wondering, how do you get to school? Like, car. Wait, do you see like tanks on the road? Bro, I've literally never seen a tank in my whole life. Do you get clean drinking water in Pakistan? Um, yeah, I... So, like, are you going to get arranged for yourself? Like, is your dad going to get you married? I guess when you're living abroad, you tend to assume the worst of a third world country. And really, I can't blame them because before I moved here, for the most part, I thought the same things. So I'm going to show you guys how I really live in Pakistan. Like everything else, when we first moved to Pakistan, we spent a really long time looking for a place to live. Now we needed some place that wasn't noisy, that wasn't dirty, and that wasn't rushy. So we decided to move to defense. But what is defense? What am I defending myself from? The tanks? Now defense is kind of a suburb? Actually, no. It's not really a suburb. But whatever it is, it's one of the areas in Karachi that is considered better in terms of living. Now, I'm not saying that Defense is the only good living area in Karachi. Because no, there are quite a few other areas and complexes which are also of quite a decent standard. But I guess just in my opinion, moving to Defense was just a smoother transition for foreigners and people who spend their whole lives living abroad. Okay, understanding Defense is like science, all right? Like, basically, it's like this big area called defense and it's divided into multiple sectors. Each sector is called a phase. Each phase is like an upgraded version of the previous phase. And there's currently eight phases. Think of it like an iPhone. So phase one is like the iPhone one. And then phase eight is like the latest one with all the new features and whatever. So my family liked phase eight the most because it ticked all of our boxes. Now I know that a lot of people don't actually like living in phase 8 and that's because it's relatively new and really underdeveloped and underpopulated. The locals of Karachi, they love their hustle and bustle so I totally get it. But not for us because coming from a street that would go to sleep at 6pm, phase 8 was like the closest we could get to our home in New Zealand. There's not a lot to do in phase 8, honestly, like all we really have are just a bunch of empty roads. And would you look at that, not even a single tank on any of the roads. We have a cinema so you can watch movies, but what's more entertaining are the Mela boys who love coming to phase 8 on a Sunday to have photo shoots. the sea and if you know me you know that i love the sea since moving i've been coming here a lot whenever i need a break or just need to clear my head the neighborhoods are safe too every house has a watchman even though i'm still not that convinced that watchmen are very useful but i guess it's the same concept as when people put up beware of dog signs even if they don't have a dog just to like scare people away here's my clean drinking water hashtag pure and cure best water my favorite so just on the note of water um when we first came to pakistan i literally hated the taste of water it just had such a bad aftertaste and i just could not stand it i know that a bunch of you guys are probably gonna attack me for this and be like oh, lena like water doesn't have taste yes it does and the water here did not taste good and i didn't like it like we went through so many brands of like these like filtered those thingy and eventually we found pure and cure and it wasn't just water it was milk too i hate the taste of milk here i was literally the kind of person who drank more milk than water and then we moved here i stopped drinking milk and that's because milk here literally tastes like cow i get that milk comes from cows but i don't want my milk to taste like cow but anyway we found a solution to our milk problem and our cow problem what <laughs> we found a solution to our milk problem and our water problem so uh We've got day fresh, like New Zealand cows, and pure and pure New Zealand water. It's, you know, it's the little things that you have to adjust to. So about a five minute drive away, there's phases six and five. This is probably where I, along with every other defense kid, spends most of the time. 
There's lots of cute cafes and restaurants near the school as well, so plans become pretty convenient. Everyone drives around on their own or has a driver to drive them around, and no one ever really feels unsafe in these places. Stepping into these places, they're always so nice looking that I almost forget I'm even sitting in Pakistan. So you see, most people I know live pretty comfortably and enjoy quality lifestyles. I get by just fine and so does everybody else I know. So screw the media for portraying an exaggerated, underprivileged lifestyle that isn't half as bad as they make it seem to be. Screw the media for creating misconceptions about the third world because that's all it is, right? Just a misconception. Well, actually, the only misconception here is that I don't live an exaggerated, underprivileged life. I live at a relatively decent standard. So do most of the other people around me, yes. But all of us here are kind of just living in a bubble, a bubble called defense. When I talk about a defense lifestyle, I mean it more so as a concept of the middle upper class lifestyle rather than the actual proximity of where people live. There's a very apparent class division that you don't even have to go to the edge of defense to find. Usually it's just the thin glass of your car window dividing you from the less privileged. Other times, it's not even that. Do you have a maid, driver, or guard? Yes, I have a maid and a driver and a guard. Yeah, I yes. Do you have a maid, a driver, or guard? Yes. Yes. Do you have a maid, a guard, or a driver? Yeah. <laughs> So now let's go see life outside the bubble. What a wonderful world.